around it and uh you know i you i think you, you you sell these out every time you put them on don't you up there in uh, portland at you do them at roseland ballroom that, that's right yeah and we do sell them out and then the little fine print on that is the venue only seats 1068 so we, yeah. we play a pretty small house but out here in oregon the next step we could go to is almost 4,000. I don't think grappling on a Sunday is ready for that. Some yep. people do, but I, I'm not quite ready to throw my money behind it. And then we go to a 17,000-seat venue, which uh, the UFC has played a couple times, as has Bellator. And it, it, it's just we're just not that kind of a market yet. So, yes, they sell out. The other side of it is it's a pretty limited number of tickets, but it creates for a really good audience. You know, Richard, I feel like you're playing your cards a little close to your best. I know you know of one more really big match that's out there in the world of grappling, but I noticed you haven't spoke of it yet. Until now. Uh, we are going to reveal here on Phone Booth Fighting. That's what the... we call a lead-in that I just gave yes, you. Yes, it is. Do you see I that? threw you a softball right down the middle. Let me tell you something. We, just not to uh, bury the lead here, we're going to break this news momentarily, but I already said this to Frank, but I'll tell it to our listeners. After doing one show with you on stage, uh, Chell, here in Las Vegas, because the whole deal was to do one of these suspended live stage shows and do it as a, a kind of a beta test, see if we want to do more of them. You and I uh, sat down that night after the big show at the Stratosphere, and I told you, I said, I completely get your timing. You get mine. We're good with this. We 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 can do uh, good things in the future with this live show. So so uh, yeah, what he did there was very very uh, smooth. With no with no, the man's a fighter. You didn't have any. Well, you, you didn't you didn't go to you didn't sneak in uh, some sort of uh, uh, program at Columbia Broadcasting School or something. Nobody's aware of. Did you, Chell? Stop, uh-huh, stop, uh-huh, Richard. Right. You're feeding my ego. I appreciate it. But without further ado, here's tell the big us news. The big here's the tell big us news. The big All right, everybody knows that uh, you know, really the uh, the mecca of uh, jujitsu competition is the uh, the the much revered and respected and coveted uh, every other year ADCC tournament that goes on in Abu Dhabi. That's fair, right? You're an yeah. ADCC winner, yeah. then uh, that's you got. It's like winning a gold medal in the Olympics. The Olympics I mean, you, of submission grappling. Yeah, exactly. You you claim that for life. So uh, they do the big tournament, lots of weight classes, male and female, but they like to have super fights. They like to have competition between recognizable names uh, to mix in uh, amongst the, uh, the tournament bracket and everything. And this year, they have a doozy, and frankly, it's one that could not hit any closer to home for me. One of the competitors is uh, Mr. Chell Sonnen, who's up here on the monitor. Chell, you have uh, accepted the invitation to uh, grapple at ADCC. You had a different opponent originally, yes? There were, you were originally yeah, I was going to wrestle with uh, Laborio, the, yep. the head of the ATT, who's, who's a legend in it. Uh, but yep. that was my original opponent, and Laborio hurt something. It was his knee or his back. Something got hurt, so he pulled out. All right, so Chell says, well, I'm still in. But I need an opponent, and to my understanding, my well-placed sources inside uh, ADCC were telling me that they said who, and Chael Sonnen said, how about Frank Mir? Frank Mir said... Why not? And we have a match, ladies and gentlemen, coming up September 22nd through the 24th. That is ADCC in Finland this year. I don't believe uh, your exact uh, date for the match has been set, but it's going to be one of those, the 22nd, 23rd, 24th of September, uh, one of those. Chell Sonnen, the American gangster, takes on Frank Mir in a jiu-jitsu match, a super fight at ADCC. Super Man, exciting. I finally get to I, get back to competing. I am very excited about this. All right, now a couple of questions come immediately to mind. Uh, first of all, I mean, the, the credentials speak for themselves. I don't think anybody's uh, questioning that. But, uh, Jill, uh, you know, Frank Mir is a guy who uh, has competed his whole career at heavyweight. You, sir, are a fellow who has uh, dominated the middleweight and uh, the light heavyweight division. So right away, I'm seeing a size uh, uh, differential here. What are your thoughts on that? 
Yeah, well, I'll tell you this. So, so Frank let me in on a secret about three or four years ago. He was bragging about a guy that uh, that Frank thought to tell me this guy's the greatest grappler ever, a guy named Ricky Lundell. Yeah. And Ricky only went about 160 pounds. And I said, Frank, you're too big for him. And he goes, Chael, the size works against me. This guy's got some speed. And he was he was just really talking up Ricky. But that is a true thing with jujitsu. You know, from the Hoist Gracie days, they've shown us that, hey, there's some other things you can do. And as far as Frank and I's match go, you know, just shoot real straight with you here because there's not going to be a bunch of promotion or come out and start calling Frank names. I mean, look, he's going to be looking for submission. I'm going to be looking for position. And I can get rewarded in that under the Abu Dhabi rules. There are points where you can get uh, – I mean, I have a way to go in it, right? Yeah. I, I, Frank is not likely to get his arm torn off if he comores me. I likely am. But I do have a way to go. There's ways that I, that I can work with the time and win this match. But I can tell you, and I feel like I'm speaking for Frank, he and I's careers will end the same way they started, which is as fans, man. We are such big fans, and Abu Dhabi, Richard, to the, your initial point, is such a big deal that Frank and I were like, look, if we got to wrestle each other, but that's what it means for us to be part of this and get to see all these other awesome matches and all these other awesome super fights, then we'll bite the bullet, man. Let's go do it. It's, it's, gonna, it's historic. It's a really big deal. It's a really big honor. And we just kind of turn it down. Frank? Yeah, I agree. And I, it's funny because I think a lot of people uh, in combat arts, they, they misunderstand that. Like, well, are you guys friendly with each other? It's like, look, man, you don't have to hate somebody to compete hard. In fact, 99% of the time, you compete hard against your friends because whether you're in a college wrestling room, high school wrestling room, if you're in a dojo, if you're doing judo, whatever the case may be, whatever sport you're competing at, if you're on a football field hitting somebody, most of your hits, most of your throws, most of your takedowns, most of your submissions are going to be on your buddies because you're training and you're going to be competitive and you're in the gym and you're going at it. So as far as stepping on that stage and competing, everybody that is at our level flips a switch, we compete, and then we turn it off and go back to, like Chael says, watching the other guys go at it and enjoying a trip to Helensky. All right. I am, uh, I am counting on that because I like you both. I consider you both friends, and I don't want you to do me like my parents did and start badgering me about which one of you I'm going to go live with. All right? Will you promise me you're not going to Well, do I wasn't that? worried about that at first, but now that Joel's out of the picture, there might actually be a real issue. Uh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're, we're, both, uh, we're both vying for your attention now, Richard. <laughs> there might be some truth to this. <laughs> Well, <laughs> one of the things that we want to pull off in doing this, and uh, I, I just couldn't be more excited about this. It's been hard not to talk about it for just a little bit of time that uh, we've been. Everybody's been trying to work the details out. One of the things that I'm really excited about is the possibility of doing an international uh, on-site podcast. And Chael, I mean, I think this would be the perfect opportunity for us to take these live stage shows that we've been doing in conjunction with you and. Uh, let's go to the netherlands with this thing we i know we got a lot of listeners over there who who would love to see us uh take the stage live we would you be up for doing that oh yeah hey frank and i already got tickets richard all you got to do is book yours man we're, we're all right you know we're in okay all right well we need to uh i'll put on my uh my promoter's hat and we'll start uh contacting some venues i tell you what i actually have experience touring in the Netherlands uh, really? with my band. Yeah, I have played Go in figure. Finland. <laughs> I need to stop saying really when you tell me new shit about you. Well, here's the cool <laughs> thing. Here's the cool thing about that area is that, you know, Finland, Denmark, Holland, you can drive. I mean, you can be in another country in a matter of hours by car, by train. So we could cover, you know, just in a long weekend, multiple, not only multiple venues, but multiple countries, probably, if we work it out. So I think it, uh, it would, and they all speak English, too. So maybe spend like four or five days there? That's right. They uh, Yeah, that's well, what I'm saying. Well, Mr. Logistics, make it happen. Okay. We're on board. All right, Chell, I want enough dates that I can print up a tour t-shirt with the dates uh, on the hey. back of it. 